Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am, and today we are going to be making our way to the Gale Tunnel. But before we do, like always, let's talk about some of the things that I did off screen. And really all I did was farm up a ton of runes. I don't think I'll be doing that for a good long while because it was 766,000 runes. That was a lot. It was very time consuming, but I got it done. I don't expect everybody to do that. And if you do, <laughs> good luck. But yeah, we'll, we'll probably be holding off for a good long time before we farm up that much ruins again. Other than the ruins, I did go ahead and put on the beast repellent torch. And that's all I did. So let's go ahead and level up. We're going to put two into vigor. Two into endurance. Two into strength. And then two into decks. And then we're going to start putting some markers down. Our first marker that we're going to put down is going to be about right here. Our second marker is going to be right here. Our third marker is going to be right over here. Fourth one over here. And then the fifth one, right down over here. Top on torrent. We're going to ride out to this path where all these swords are. And then we're going to veer off to the left. Just for a moment. We're going to grab this summoning pool real fast. Be careful of the Erd Tree Guardians. We're going to turn back around, go back out to this path, grab this item, just some drawstring lightning grease, hop over this wall, and then head north, right where this dead tree and that big old rock is. Gonna hop up here, maybe. Fall down right there. And then right here. We can hop off torrent. Grab a rune arc. Take these guys out. This guy, and then that guy. Cool, got some guardian bracers. You can get their whole um, attire, their armor, if you're lucky. Let's go ahead and drink our flask, summon in Oleg, and then we're going to buff our weapon. Now this is going to be a putrid Erd tree avatar. They're kind of like, well, they pretty much are the same as an Erd tree avatar. The only difference is, is they have this butt slam that'll spew out a bunch of scarlet rot. So be careful of that. When they do that, just run away. Do not want scarlet rot. It's worse than poison. Your health ticks down extremely fast. I, it's really bad at dodging that. Matter of fact, it's the first thing that stupid putrid avatar did. So, we want to dodge now. Something I'm trashed here at, I guess. Okay. 
And we killed the putrid herd tree avatar. It's not hard. You just have to be careful for that butt slam. You see it jump up in the air, just start running the opposite way. We get the green burst crystal tier for killing that Erd tree avatar along with the flame shrouding crack tier. We're going to come over here to the northeast. Pretty cool vista, by the way. You can see the bestial sanctum over there, and then you can see the Kalid Coliseum. We'll be going over there much, much later into the walkthrough. For now, we're going to go on this branch. Grab ourselves a cracked pot. And then we won't hop on torrent because we're going to come over to a door and open it up. We're going to be going through a catacomb. Make sure that you have a shield on. Even if it's not 100% resistant. And what I mean by that is if it doesn't negate 100% damage. We're going to rest at this uh, grace, by the way, so we can get our flasks and stuff back. Because the next boss that we're about to fight is a little bit annoying. Actually, I think that we're fighting two annoying bosses in this episode. Activate that summoning pool. We're going to take this elevator down. Once we get to the bottom, though, we're going to send the elevator back up. There is an area to go down below. And we're going to go down there as shortly, just not yet. We want to come down these steps. Be really careful. We have a gargoyle. Got another gargoyle over here, but the main one we want to be careful of is this guy. Grab some grave glove wart. Be careful on the right side. We're going to have a gargoyle with a big old sword. Get a backstab on him. Oh, guess it did not trigger. It's weird because it looked like it triggered for a second, and then, I don't know. Guess it decided, nope, not today, Mr. Wayne. Let's pull this lever. It's going to open up the boss door. We're not going to be going over there just yet. Now, instead of going down that other tunnel, we're going to drop down. We will end up over there on the other side after dropping down. Be careful. We got another guy with a big old sword. And then right here is a pool of scarlet rot. We're going to run here, run down this and veer off to the right where these torches are. Grab some ghost glove wart. There's nothing in here to really worry about. Just a couple of crabs. You can fight them if you want. I'm not even going to bother with them. I'm just going to go up this ladder. And then right here, we have some gargoyles. We're going to take them out. Or imps, whatever you want to call them. I know that their technical name is imps. But they look like gargoyles to me. We're 
going to hop up here, get ourselves the imp head wolf. Each of those imp heads, by the way, have different stat boosts. So if you want to check them out and see what they boost for stats, you can. Don't remember what the wolf does. I think it's strength. And I think the cat um, head increases your stamina. Grab some Grave Glove Wart 5. But don't quote me on that stuff. I, I'm not positive on it. I just ran past that item. I was like, where's the item at? In front of your face, Mr. Wayne. That's where it's at. Grab some Aeonia. I think it's Aeonia butterflies. At least that's what I'm going to call them. Some Grave Glove Wart 3. And then that's all we have to grab over there. And this is where I was talking about we would end up. So we just did a big old circle. Now we can drop back down. I know we just dropped down not too long ago. But this time we're going to run straight through the pool of Scarlet Rot. Veer off to the left for a second just to grab an item. And then continue down the path through the archway. Just be careful. Do you have a slime that will drop down on top of you? So you don't want to sit there too much. I thought there was another... No, guess not. I thought there was one more uh, Grave Glove Wart right there, but I guess not. Let's drink our flask. And then as soon as we come in here, we're going to summon an Oleg. We're going to have to fight two of these Erdtree Burial Watchdogs. Super obnoxious. Your best bet is to take out the one with the staff first and then work on the one with the sword. That's what I always do. Usually Oleg will take aggro of one of them. After we beat the two bosses here, we're going to get the Mad Pumpkin Head Spear Dashes. Really cool Spear Dashes if you want a more tanky Spear Dash. This is a really good tank for everybody. For now, let's go ahead and fast travel back to the beginning of the catacombs. I'll see everybody over there. Let's turn on our lantern. And then we're going to hop on Torrent and start making our way through Kaelid, finally. I am not thrilled to be doing Kaelid. Kaelid is probably my least favorite area, besides one other area. But I'll talk about it once we get there. Just heading southwest till we get to the path here. Hop off. We'll light this grace. And then in this hut, we're going to grab ourselves an item. Some preserving bolluses. By the way, over here, you can see that we're going to be fighting some big crows eventually. More or less, we're going to be running from some big crows because I, I don't like to fight them. If you want to fight them, you can, but I don't advise it. Get some golden rune threes. And then we're going to put our torch on. We're going to be needing this for the dogs. So that they don't mess with us. As long as you have that torch out, they'll leave you alone. As soon as you put it away, they will attack you. So we want to come over here and get on the other side of this golden scarab. 
And the reason why is because we want it to run away from the dogs. That way it doesn't accidentally go by them and we hit them and then we have a bunch of dogs to fight and just it'll, it'll be a mess and, and that's not what we want. Let's get rid of this marker real fast. Get out of here puppy. Now we're going to have a really big bird to deal with right after getting the great sword which is usually everybody's favorite sword. It's the same sword from Berserk. If you haven't watched that anime, do yourself a favor. Watch it. It's good. We're just going to open up this chest and then immediately hop on tour if you can. Grab some explosive bolts and then run away. Just just run away. <laughs> don't even don't even mess with the bird. If you can help it. If you can kill it or you feel confident in killing it, go ahead and kill it. Me, I'm just going to run away from it. Come over to this next marker. Oh my goodness. Be really careful. The giant right there can hit you. I forgot about that. Just be super careful. So yeah, it'll shoot. Oh my goodness, I went too close. It'll shoot some arrows at you. Don't be like me, kids. Be smart. Don't be like me. We're going to follow this road on down to the fifth marker where the grace is. We're going to light this grace and then we're going to immediately sit at it so we can get the enemy AI off of us. Let's go ahead and take this marker away. We're going to put a few markers down real fast. Our first marker is going to be right over here. Second one is going to be about right over here. Third one's going to be over here. And then the fourth one will be right over here. I'm not going to put a marker in this area because we're already here. We can take off our torch now. We're not going to be running into any dogs at the moment. Let's hop on Torrent after activating that summoning pool. If we come through this archway, come down here, get ourselves some drawstring fire grease. We can come over this way as well. Get ourselves some smoldering butterflies. And then over here, get some great dragonfly heads. I'm just going to circle around to come down here. We're going to be fighting two pumpkin heads at the same time, but thankfully they're really not that hard. Let's go ahead and drink our flask buff our weapon and then as soon as we get in here summon in Oleg I'm gonna two hand my weapon oh that thing got in my way the spear no oh my goodness I'm like yeah this isn't too hard and then I just completely play like dog shit They are annihilating Oleg here. Okay, so definitely don't be like me. <laughs> I am just playing like complete crap. Try not to hit the Mad Pumpkin um, head's head. Because you're going to do very little damage. Obviously, I mean, it's a huge metal container on his head, so. And there we go. Easy peasy, right? 
<laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. It should be easier than that, especially for everybody else because they're not trash tier like me. Right here, we're going to get the Vestige Shield. Really cool shield, super heavy, super big, but you can hold it and then spew out a bunch of flames in front of you. Super cool. I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think it takes 44 strength to wield it. Let's go ahead and fast travel back to this grace so we can refill all our stuff and then we can continue on our way. I'll see everybody over there. Put our lantern back on. Let's travel down this path here. Once we get into this intersection, we're going to hang more to the left than the right. We don't want to get the attention of that bird. So just try to stay far to the left. Pull out your bow or get ready to cast a spell, whichever you're doing. Because we have ourselves a scarab. Get a somber four. Yeah, that bird came down. So, here is my advice for everybody. We're going to be heading north. Do not slow down. Don't stop. Don't slow down. As soon as we get over here, we're going to grab this item. We're going to hop off. Immediately go to this imp statue. Say yes. Put it in. And go down into the catacombs. There's nothing that's going to attack you here. So you can open up the chest. You'll get a really cool sword. This is the Sword of St. Trina. It will cause sleep buildup. It's a really cool PvP weapon. Um, I believe some people have figured out a good method on PvE combat with it. But that's something that you're going to have to look up or find a video on. Oh, I accidentally turned off my lantern. Turn that back on and hop on Torrent. That's what I'm trying to do. We're going to hop up here. Grab this Golden Rune 5. And then immediately run. Do not stop. Don't stop. The crow is going to chase you. Just do the best you can. going to back away, thankfully. Hop down here. We're going to the fourth marker now. Just keep hopping down. And then we will come over here to the Gale Tunnel. To hand our weapon. We're going to have a couple of enemies over here. That is the best outcome you can wish for. Just making sure those enemies aren't chasing me. Over here, if you break the barrels and boxes, you can hop down. We don't have an elevator, so if you come down here and you feel like you're not ready, don't come down here because there's only one way out and you have to go through the actual tunnel. So you can roll off right here or jump, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Let's light this grace and then we'll sit at it. Even though I just have a little bit of health gone, we'll still sit at it. Activate this summoning pool. This is a good place to get smithing stone fours and threes. You can even farm them here if you really want to. Speaking of which, we just got a smithing three. Grab ourselves a golden rune five.
grab a smithing stone four. And then you see all these little baby land octopuses? Don't worry about them. We want to take out the big mama first. The big mama octo. Finish that off. And then we'll kill... these babies real quick get a somber smithing stone four and then the cross naganata or naganata however you pronounce that again i'm i'm really bad at uh names We're going to take this guy out first. And those two. Take this guy out. And then at the back, we want to run over here really fast. Take this guy out and then try not to get hit by that guy if you can. But you want to take the guy out to the back first. He's got a horn that he will alert all the other enemies. And then you'll be fighting everybody at the same time. And that's never any fun. We'll hop up top here. Grab a smithing stone four. I think that's all of them. That is. At least over there. There's still some more over here. Get another smithing stone four. That's why I said this is a great place to farm up some smithing stone fours. Now the ones that you get off the wall obviously aren't going to respawn. But the guys that are mining them and stuff. They're always going to either drop smithing stone threes, fours, or the... Um, what's the blue stuff called that they're mining here? Hold on. The cracked crystal. Grab some large glintstone scrap. I mean, they won't drop it like every time you kill them, but they'll always drop one of the three. And over here, we can pick up a smithing stone four. And then it's been a while since we've seen Mr. Alexander. Let's go ahead and talk to him, see what he's got to say to us. Oh. The esteemed warrior. Where did you spring from? This was supposed to be a dead end, I'm sure of it. What's going on here? A door from thin air. Well, stranger things happen at sea, or so I'm told. But onward to the Kalid Wilds. Ah, that dead end had me rather stumped. <laughs> it's time I set off to the festival at Redmain Castle on the southern edge of the scarlet rot blighted Kalid Wilds. Doesn't the thought just set your heart aflutter? Alexander reminds me of Sigmeyer and Sigward of the Dark Souls franchise. Right here is our grace. We lit this a long time ago at the beginning of the walkthrough. You can sit at it just in case you die. You have a short run back to the boss. We're all the way down in the limb grave. Well, actually where we started by the smoldering church. We're not far from that. Matter of fact, let's get rid of that marker there. And if you run out there, you can get out just in case this boss is getting to where it's too tough for you to kill him or anything like that this is a magma worm highly highly obnoxious wouldn't be as bad if it wasn't a small um area to fight him in but because their arena is so small when he does his running like lava attack 
it just he just stays running into the wall it's just very obnoxious like this right here he's gonna oh no he spit fire there now he's gonna do his running lava attack that thing is so annoying he's gonna do it again and he will just keep spamming this a lot so there he goes again oh no he threw a fireball he's trying to make me look like a fool it's all right bud you don't have to make me look like a fool i do that plenty enough myself Okay, now I don't normally get the critical on him when he does that, just because I can do more damage to him like this. And he is dead. So that is probably the smoothest that boss fight can go. If you just keep on his head whenever he's not doing his running attack or spewing out lava everywhere, you can easily get him into that critical state. Like his head is very weak. So do remember that. So for killing him, we get a dragon heart, which we need those. But more importantly, we get the moon veil katana. A lot of people's favorite katana is moon veil and another one, which we'll talk about a lot later into the walkthrough. But for now, we have moon veil. Super cool. It not only has blood loss buildup, but it has a really cool L2 attack where it like shoots out magical beams and stuff. So really good katana for all you spellcasters if you're into more like melee and spellcasting at the same time. Use the Moon Veil. Now let's go ahead and fast travel over to this grace. And then after we do that, we'll end the video. I'll see everybody over there. All righty, everyone. I want to start by telling everybody, thank you so very much for watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.